Okay, great. So, yeah, this is the last section of the workshop, which won't take very long. Um, we might go over by about like, a few minutes or so, but yeah, this one's really quick. Uh, so, yeah, we'll be taking a very, very brief look at how Git works in a group environment. Yeah, we, we just saw how to use Git on your own when you're working on your own projects. And now we'll see a little bit about how it kind of works when you have other team members working on the same project. Um, there isn't much hands-on stuff in this section. Uh, the reason for that is because there's no real easy way to do so in a way that makes sense. Uh, there's no one-size-fits-all demo that we can do um, because what you need to know will actually depend on what project, as in depend on the project that you're actually doing or you're using Git with. So the main difference between uh, using Git alone and using Git with others is uh, basically this. Like, when you're using Git alone, uh, you only have one you only have a repository for your project on your computer. Um, so if you're using Git in, as part of a team, everyone has a repository on their machines, but you also need a central repository on a, like some server or a different computer somewhere else. So the first thing you need to do when you actually want to use Git with others is you need to find a host like to store your central repo on. So let's just take a look at how the workflow actually kind of changes uh, when you use Git with others. So does everyone remember this? So this is the standard workflow that we go through when we're working with Git. And we saw this in part one today. Uh, so yeah, it changes a little bit when we work with others. So the two differences here are we still have normal change stage and comment in the cycle. Uh, but now we also have this, uh, let's see. We also have this thing over here. In it, we also have clone, and we also have this push and pull thing. So, what clone? Clone is just basically another way of starting this whole cycle. Uh, it's only used when we have a remote repo. Uh, to create a new repo, we use git init, like, and we saw this in part one. Uh, if we want to copy a remote repo, so we have an existing remote repo that we want to start working with, we use git. We use clone, so we type git clone instead. So what this does is tells Git to download the stuff which is in that repository and make a copy of it on our computer. And then we can just work with it the same way we normally do, as if it were a local, a normal repository that we created ourselves. So let's take a look at cloning right now. Uh, then we'll come back and look at the push and pull thing. So the first thing we need to do is Right now, we're in our uh, working directory here. So we want to go back to our desktop. Because what we're about to do is we're going to take a remote repo that we've already set up for you guys. And we're going to make a copy of that here. Uh, so we don't want this repo to be inside our existing one. So we'll just change directory up one level. So just cd and two dots. And now we are back on the desktop. And if we do PWD again, you can see, yeah, this is our desktop. So the next thing we are going to do is actually launch our web browser. Uh, and we go to GitHub slash Git Workshop. Uh, hang on, let me get, make this a little bigger. So you want to go to this address here. So everyone's okay? Like you've all gone to this uh, this address and it's all loaded and stuff. Okay, so what we have here is actually um, this is actually a repository that we created beforehand uh, that's pretty similar to the one you've just made. Uh, so it won't be exactly the same, but you can see we have a notes file here. Uh, we actually have the handout that you have in digital form. Um, so yeah, you can see we have this notes file which has some of the stuff that we just did. Uh, so yeah, uh, this repo is actually hosted on GitHub. Um, it's actually on a server somewhere else in the world. Like it's not on the computers. It's not on my computer. Uh, it's not on, obviously on the computers you have. Uh, so if you notice this address here, uh, this is actually the address of the repository. So what we want to do now is we'll take this address. You can just click the copy keyboard thing. Then we go back to our command line. We type git clone. And then we paste it in. 
uh, if you're on Windows to paste, uh, you press, I think it's, yeah, you press insert, the insert key on your keyboard, uh, that pastes into, ooh, hmm. Clone. So yeah, that will just paste the address here. And then you hit enter. Oh, hmm. Oh, okay. And this is what you should see. If you, yeah. So it says cloning to Git workshop. And then what Git will do is it will basically just connect up to that repository and it will make a copy of it. So you can see it's doing that now. And now if you actually go back to our desktop, you can see there's this new folder that it just made. And if you open that, you should see all the stuff which was up here on the site. So does everyone have that? Now you can see this notes file. You can see we have the handout that everyone has. And this is a little sample. Oh, this is a little sample of readme file. Uh, just launching that. Yeah. Okay, so this is basically what you do if you already have a remote repository somewhere that you want to work with. Like, let's say other people on a team you're in have created a repository for you, uh, and this is the repository that you're going to be working with. So this is basically what you do. You, you get the URL, then you tell Git to clone it onto your computer, and now you can just basically start working with this repository. Um, in fact, let's just go into it right now. And you notice that, yeah, we have a master branch. If we do log, you can see all the changes that were made. And everything just basically works the same. Like, you can now actually start adding, commenting changes to this repository that you just cloned that's on your machine. So any questions about this? Anything unclear? Or is everything up? Yes. Okay, so what cloning does is it makes a copy of the remote repository. Uh, so um, to actually hook it up so that you can like make changes to the repository, uh, you need to do some extra steps, which we won't be covering today. Um, so this is yes. So what we've just done will make will basically just make a copy of that repository on your computer. So any changes you make here don't get reflected on the one that's up here. Yeah. So we've just basically made yeah we've made a copy and it's now a local repository. So while we're here, let's just talk a little bit about this site, uh, GitHub. Uh, so GitHub is actually the largest code hosting site in the world. Um, there's tons of repositories on it. Um, if we can go to the about page, oh, uh, explore. So how many of you went for the um, went for the HTML workshop last week? So you remember you created something using Bootstrap. Right, Twitter Bootstrap. So that's actually on GitHub. Uh, you can see Twitter actually has stuff on here. So there's a load of different projects that you can find on here. Uh, so if you find like an open source project you're interested in, you can always just go to it. So in this case, here's Bootstrap. And you can do what we just did. Like you can just take this URL and you can clone it onto your machine. And then you have all the code for Bootstrap. So if you start your own projects, it's actually a good idea to upload them to GitHub as well. Um, uh, yeah, you need an account to do that, but what companies actually do is they do take a look at your GitHub profile and stuff uh, when, they, when they look at your resume and things. Because that's actually one of the easiest ways they can see how good you are at coding, like to actually see the code you've written. So let's move on from there. Okay, so we're back here again. Uh, this is the last thing we're covering today. Uh, what the push and pull things that you see over here actually mean. So, after you comment your changes on your local repo, they don't automatically reflect on the remote one, right? So you actually need a way to send your changes up to that remote repo. Um, you also need a way to be able to get changes that other people have made down onto your machine. 
So that's basically what, where this push and pull thing comes in. So when you have a bunch of changes that you're happy with and you want to put up on the remote repo, you run git push and git will basically just upload them for you. If you want to bring any changes others have made down, you run git pull and what that will do is it'll take the changes and it'll merge them into your stuff. Much like merging a branch, like it's exactly the same way that merging a branch works actually. Um, the thing to note is that you don't have to do push and pull after every single comment you make. Uh, that's just like to make this a little easier to see. So what you can do is basically you can do the normal change stage and comment for as much as you want, and then only when you're happy, like you say, okay, this is the stuff that I want to put up, then you can run push and pull. It doesn't have to be done in this exact cycle. So does anyone have any questions? Oh, um, so, okay, yeah, the uh, question is where does where this stuff go when you run push? Uh, so basically, if you're working with a remote repo, what you have to do, uh, which we're not covering, uh, is you actually have to tell Git that this is, there's a remote repository somewhere that I want to work to. And then whenever I run push, it'll take those changes and upload it there. Whenever I run pull, it'll take the changes from there and bring it back. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you can actually, yeah, you can do all the stuff we've done before, like branching and everything with a remote repo. And what that, that, that means is you can actually do all this stuff with other people. So you don't have to use stuff like Dropbox or Google Docs to host, to do your group coding projects. Um, and yeah, that's all we're actually covering today. Uh, so you might ask, why aren't we actually seeing this? Like, why don't we actually clone a repo? Why don't we hook up to it? Why don't we try push and pull some code from it? Um, the answer to that is basically the reason up here. Like, you don't actually need to know how to use this yet. Um, you need to actually start using Git on your own first, and there's no real point trying to use it in a group project if you don't even use it like on your own stuff. So the most important step is really just to start using Git on your own personal projects, or even on any assignments you may get that require code. And it really does come in useful, especially for assignments, because you can always like create a branch to experiment with one thing, and create another one to experiment doing the same thing a different way, and then you can just swap between them, see which one works, and then merge it back. So once you actually start using Git regularly, uh, you'll actually be able to figure out how to hook it up to a specific remote repo yourself. And that's really the reason we're not actually doing this today. Uh, so yeah, that's really the end of all we have for you today. Um, so this is, again, everything you've done, which is in your handouts. So we started today with looking at the basics of how to make, uh, how to use Git to make comments. Uh, we moved on to the second part to look at how we can do branches. Um, in the third part, we looked at how we can go back in time, how we can check out all the versions of our code, how we can undo mistakes, and how we can just completely get rid of them forever, um, not forever, how we can completely get rid of them. And in this last bit, we just really briefly looked at how Git may work if we use it with others. So, yeah, thanks to everyone for coming down. Uh, does anyone have any last questions, doubts, or any issues that you want to clarify? Yes, uh, thanks. Uh, I mean, like, that's cool. And something to do with, like, how it can be edited, for example, Photoshop. Uh, OK, uh, question is, does this only work with text files? Um, Short answer is yes, the long answer is kind of. Uh, if you check, you can check in non-text files. Like you, if you notice the repo that we just got you to cloud, we have a PDF file in there. Uh, the difference is you can't do anything, like you can't see the difference between things. So that only works with text files. Oh uh, yeah, you can, still, you can still make different comments with them and things like that, yeah. So every, every, oh. Everything, yeah, everything works. It's just that you don't get the, um, you don't get to see line by line changes. That only works with text and code files. Yeah.